Hello, welcome to Einstein Mechanics. In this episode, we are going to solve one interesting question. As we can see now, shaft AB. So let me, this is A, this is B. Let's call here, it's also C. So shaft AB has a 30 mm diameter and it is made of steel with an allowable shearing stress to be 90 megapascal while shaft bc is also 50 mm diameter and is made of what aluminium alloy with allowable shearing stress of 60 megapascal neglecting the effect of stress concentration determine the largest torque t that can be applied at a so here we are interested in the torque we can apply at a a very simple one so what do we do here we have to draw the free body diagram for the for the problem are we okay so here if i'm to draw the free body diagram this is the shaft this is what we are going to have so this is the first part and the second part is also looking this way so they are meeting at this point and i'm having the second part this way all right so at this point i am applying a torque where we are calling it as what t in order to reverse or to balance this there is going to be an opposing t also here do we get that yes and since they are keyed at a point whatever torque we apply is going to what affect the part a b is that so yes that is true so from this is from a to b to c we have the various diameters given and this is also going to have a diameter this is 50 mm and this is 30 mm all right so what we are going to consider is first part let's consider the first shaft which is shaft ab which is made of what steel if i'm to draw the free body diagram for that that is going to be this way so this is just the free body diagram for the first part the steel shaft and this is the torque applied t say to balance it there is also a t here is that right yes that is very right and we are to determine what the torque applied to this steel shaft which is the t so meaning we have an expression which says always the shear stress is going to be what 16 times the torque on pi the diameter cube so here if we are interested in torque at a b then we can make torque at a b the subject and we are going to get the shear stress in a b so let's relate everything to a b the shear stress in a b multiplying pi multiplying the diameter cube in a b everything is going to divide what 16 is that right yes so meaning torque applied at a b is going to be what is the shear stress in a b the allowable is 90 mega pascal so let's do it 90 mega which is 10 to the power what 6 multiplying the pi multiplying the diameter the diameter in a b is also given as what 30 so since we are working in meters that is going to be a 0 0.03 cube on what on 16 so here our torque in a b or the torque applied that is going to be 477.1 newton watt meter are we okay so meaning if we apply this torque of 477.1 then it is going to twist the same member are we okay now there's an analysis here that we can make we can also calculate for 
the tug inside the aluminium, the maximum that it can contain. This means that with all the parameters given, the 30 mm diameter, the shear stress given, the only torque that can be contained by the shaft AB is 477.1 newton meter. And remember, once you apply that torque, that same twisting is going to apply to the aluminium, right? Yes. But that does not mean that the aluminium has that maximum torque. There's a maximum torque also for the aluminium, which may be greater than the torque required for the steel. But since practical analysis will tell you that whatever we have for the steel is going to be what is going to twist the aluminium. Let's assume for the aluminium we are going to get, say, 500 newton meter as the torque, and the steel is we are seeing as 477.1. If we apply the torque of the aluminium here, it is going to distort or break the steel because it is greater than it. But if we apply the steel torque, then the aluminium will be able to be twisted because it has even a maximum one than what we are having. Is that true? That is why we are interested in finding the torque applied to the steel. Let's find out if the torque applied to the aluminium is going to be greater or less so that we know that the analysis is correct. Now, if we are to find for the torque inside this aluminium, which is, we consider the BC, which is for the aluminium. Then we can also draw a free body diagram this way. And here we apply a torque. We also apply a torque here. Are we okay? So we say T in BC, T in BC. The same formula, which is shear stress in BC is, is supposed to be 16 torque in BC multiplying the pi diameter of BC cube. So if we make torque in BC, the subject that is going to be the same as the shear stress in BC multiplying pi and the diameter in BC cube, everything on 16. Putting in our parameters, the shear stress is 60 megapascal for the aluminium, multiplying pi, and the diameter given was 50, that is 0 0.05 cube on what? 16. That is giving us a torque in BC to be what? 1472.6 Newton. Meter. So what do you see? You can see that there's high torque required for what? The aluminium. Is that so? Yes. But this, so this is the aluminium, this is the steel, and this is our torque. It is fixed at this point. So this is the diagram is fixed. So you can see that the maximum torque the aluminium can hold is 1000 plus, right? but they still can only hold 477.1. So in that case, we have to go for the smaller one in, in order to maintain the system. Because if we try to apply this, even though the aluminum can contain, but they still cannot contain it, right? But if we apply the 477, then still can contain it, aluminum can what? Contain. And even the question was just interested in the applied torque at the steel part. But this is just to give you a further understanding of what is happening. If you don't get it, please go back and start from scratch. You'll get the understanding. Please subscribe to the channel. See you in the next episode. Thank you.